Good morning, Austin. Hope everyone is doing phenomenal this year with the brand New Year's resolutions and everything going on for everyone. It's the first day of the work week since I know a lot of people also had off yesterday as the New Year's holiday for a lot of company stuff too. Today, I am happy to be joined by Andy and Nicole of Andy K's Donuts. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing well. Enjoying this nice warm weather other than the fact that it's cedar season. So I know yeah. <laughs> well, myself and a lot of other Austinites have to battle that a little bit, but you still, as someone who's originally from the Midwest, I still would rather have it be 50, 60, maybe even 70 degrees out and have to battle a little bit of cedar allergies than for it to be zero degrees out. Oh, absolutely. I'm from the DC area and been down here for 12 years and I don't, I don't miss the cold and the yeah. snow. And no, you don't have any there. imminent plans to, to, mm -hmm. to relocate back up there, do you? No, I do not. Like I said, Andy and Nicole here, a part of Andy K's Donuts. Why don't you guys maybe give us just a brief kind of origin story about, you mentioned coming from DC, like what was your reasons for initially coming to Austin and how things got going for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. I stayed in the DC area till I was like in my early twenties and I got really into donuts for some reason around there and all they had was Dunkin' Donuts. So I was like always on the search for finding donuts and then just on a whim, moved down here with a friend. And then shortly after I met Nicole and it's been 12 years coming up on it. Yeah. Coming up on 12 mm -hmm. years together. Yeah. Once, once we met, she shortly learned about my interest in donuts and the interest turned into an obsession and then yeah. just a couple years in started making donuts all the time, trying to get down recipes and stuff like that. And thought it was going to be a short process, ended up being probably four to five years of really working on cake donuts and yeast raised donuts and all different flavor ideas that I have. But eventually we got it down to where we were happy with the, with what we were making and thought it was the right time to get started. But And I'm originally from Austin. So when Andy moved here, I was like showing him around my favorite donut shops, but there's not that many in town and we don't have as many like Dunkin' Donuts or like bigger chains, but there's not a lot of, there's a lack of like scratch made. Most places yeah. are just like small bag, you know, bag mixes, neighborhood shops, which is totally fine. And like, we love those, but there is definitely like a need for more of a handcrafted, handcrafted artisanal, type, artisanal of. type of donut. Yeah. No, and, de and definitely the breakfast taco definitely <laughs> supersedes donuts when it comes to oh, Austin yeah. breakfast <laughs> any, Absolutely. any day of the week, but it does then leave a bit of a void for people who love and crave donuts. Yeah. And especially with the, so many people coming to Austin from elsewhere, they quickly find that there's not donuts that fit the, their need for uh, donuts that aren't like just the bag, like just going to H-E-B and picking out, right? In little like mom and pop shops, like bag mixed donuts come with a lot of ingredients that you may not want in the food you're eating with, but like things that help the shelf life, things that help with the color and, and, and consistency and all that stuff, which all lends to changing the flavor and stuff like that. Yeah. Like fortunately for us, Austin hasn't had that. There used to be one years ago called Red Rabbit, which kind of turned into a Wheatsville. Bill kind of took over Red Rabbit Co-op, which was a donut making company and they have those there. But beyond that, it's not, there's not anything that's like scratch made. That was our focus. And that's, we're very focused on knowing what's in the food that, sure. that we're making and making it taste good and interesting, which goes along with, we're constantly changing flavors and stuff like that to keep it and appealing for all sorts of different people. And it's hard to believe that there would need to be a shelf life for donuts because I feel like they just get eaten so quickly that they would never need a shelf life. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> but no, like anything food wise in America, just because of, because very few things that you get are grown or made in your backyard these days anymore. Like you just have to have some type of shelf life for transportation and for different things that way. And like you mentioned too, there's the cool part with having a city like Austin, where you've had so many people moving is you have a lot of different interests and ideas and tastes and stuff that kind of start to come into a city. But you all, you also have, especially in the last decade or so with food in general, like say a much keener eye to what people are putting in their bodies from a health perspective, whether it be stuff that they really are trying to avoid or just being at a bare minimum, more aware, I think in a lot of cases of what they're putting in, not that 
plenty of people still don't enjoy having some junk from time to time, but yeah. just are more cognizant of it and maybe kind of limit it to some degree. Yeah, there's still donuts, but but yeah, to go back to everyone coming here from out outside of Austin, we found out about some stuff that people are uh, some traditions that people are into. Apple cider cake donuts are not a thing down here, but they're huge up in the northeast and northwest where apple orchards are. There was someone that messaged us asking for donuts because apparently the college they go to one day a year, everyone skips class and goes and eats apple cider donuts. And that's not a okay. thing that I've ever heard of, and not a but it feels like a tradition that, that needs know. to be started. College campus wise, yeah. but yeah, since we're since we've all graduated college, I feel like it needs to happen work wise as well too. Yeah, yeah, I would love it for everyone not to go to work and come here. <laughs> and the, the national, <laughs> national holiday on National Donut Day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you, so obviously you lo love donuts and then decided to start making some. When you first started making some, was there ever really ever any thought of turning that into a side hustle or a business versus just making them for yourself? I just, I had the idea of that I wanted to eventually open a donut shop and having little to no information on how to do that or where to start. I actually started working at a donut shop to just understand how a donut shop works. And I worked at one that was uh, had locations in Oak Hill and Lakeway and Steiner Ranch. And I worked there for like three, two to three years and learned like the ins and outs of a normal donut shop and like kind of start from there. But as far as like making the recipes, that was just, uh, I wanted that to, I, you, that was something you wanted to have unique to you guys in your shop eventually was the recipes and the flavors. Yeah. Yeah. Component to it. And like, he's a perfectionist. And so he just obsesses about it and we would just be driving around and he's like, all of a sudden, do you think I should add another teaspoon of baking soda? And he's just like constantly thinking about how he could change the texture to what he wanted. So like, it was like maybe five years of just not every day. But like maybe every once a week making donuts or at least trying. Yeah, a couple times like a week. Like a couple times just, a week trying just in our apartment. Um, but yeah, the goal was eventually to have a business and open up a shop because we are, uh, we've been working in the food service industry for over a decade. And just with that in mind of having our own business, just want to learn the ins and outs of how a restaurant works in general, whether it's a donut shop or a Mexican restaurant or a coffee shop. They're, they all have a lot of similar similarities that you can pick from. And oh, uh, these people, this is what they find efficient, an efficient way to run their business. Keep that in mind and somehow let that work in our, in our field. Sure. No, try again, trying to learn from others' mistakes and, su and successes as well. But a lot of times it's learning from the mistakes. So you can avoid those as much as possible, whether it be in the recipe kind of thing, in the business side of things, or a lot mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, one, so it's one of those things, Nicole, you never have to ask, what do you, you know, like the typical woman I'll be, so what are you thinking about for Andy? It's I'm thinking about donuts and how oh, he'll how, tell me what he's to, thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't need to ask to talk about it. She can just talk about <laughs> it on game. I can just <laughs> like, I could, I could just use a little bit of, yes. Can we just not talk about anything for a little while? Or... That sounds very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I know currently, I believe you guys still don't have your specific shop up, but you guys are running, you guys are the provider for donuts at a few different coffee shops and places around Austin, as well as doing delivery. Yeah, absolutely. There's nine shops that we are currently selling at weekends only and primarily on the East side, but we have a shop up North all gimmicks off of metric. If uh, anybody that's out of the delivery area wants to try them, but uh, we're just trying like. I was saying we're in the food service industry, don't have a whole lot of capital to start our business. So we were just trying to find a way to get started and have people try our donuts. And we've gotten a following with starting out that way. And we have some diehard fans of ours. We would like to eventually have our own brick and mortar, but right now we're just using a shared commissary kitchen to yep. make the donuts and then delivering them to all the shops and then delivering them to all the people who order the home deliveries. Yeah. And it feels like there's a lot of benefits with that. And obviously having that community, having that, as we've learned in the last couple of years, having that community in person, there's nothing that really can replace that at all. But mm. by being virtual, 
for the most part, it allows you guys to not have some of the overhead for one thing, because unfortunately the brick and mortar part, a lot of times is the most expensive part for a restaurant. But then on top of it, it allows you to bring in, have a wider area of potentially people, people of interest if you're delivering things, because where someone might not drive to a donut shop, that's 20 minutes away. But if you know, you can get an order of a dozen donuts, it's easier for you guys to have that delivered to someplace potentially. Yeah, absolutely. We have people all across the city that we're able to deliver to, and hopefully those people will enjoy our donuts once we actually do have a brick and mortar that they will visit us. But it's also like the shops get like a limited amount. Some people get there early and buy them. And if you have a certain flavor in mind, I like having the option of having the delivery instead of hunting it down because people will message us like, the shops out of this, where can I find this? And I like want to help them so bad, but I feel like the best way is just to... Not really to keep, yeah, keep a live inventory of donuts yeah. was at different a different restaurant or different bakeries or coffee shops throughout Austin. Yeah, no, I've seen other companies where they will one's like a gourmet brownie company that's I think they're based out of Florida actually, but like they'll and they'll actually ship stuff I, to my knowledge. But like they just it's for this person who has a regular full time job decides, hey, I want to spend a weekend and make a bunch of different a bunch of brownies. I'm going to make these three flavors. And then someone can order, can put in pre-orders so that way she knows how much to make at that point in time. So there's just so many different interesting potential ways to do it. Again, I think potentially a brownie has a little bit different shelf life than a donut would have, but all I just know is that they both taste really good. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. What has, what the goal obviously eventually to have that store, would it also be to still do delivery and store? Would it be to grow to multiple locations? What's, is there a larger goal or is it just hitting that next mark of getting that brick and mortar location eventually? Just hitting the next mark. The doors are open to any ideas and don't want to shut anything out. If we can find a way to do deliveries as well, when we do that, why close the door on that? But uh, yeah, just trying to get to the next point and then from there, reassess the situation. Okay. Was you you mentioned it's been obviously a few years in the making for you of thinking, Hey, this is what I want to do is make donuts and open up a shop. Was that something like, how long had that been a passion or a goal for you? What would you say? As long as I've known you. Yeah. So I guess probably like, it was more like, uh, oh, this would be cool. Not a, like, I want to do it, but it turned from like, this would be cool to, I want to do it like pretty shortly in a couple of years, I think. Yeah, it went from, wouldn't it be cool to have a donut shop and have that be your job to, I think we could maybe try to make this work. Yeah. And like, also just, I've been working in the restaurant industry just as long as he has, but primarily like in coffee shops as a barista. So I can see, I saw like the options that they had for like pastries. A lot of times it's like the same shop. And people get tired of the same like croissants and stuff like that, that places have. We originally didn't really think about selling at coffee shops that just like, we won't, we thought about doing a farmer's market type of thing to begin with, but just how things flowed and worked out, like that didn't end up working out. And then a friend of ours in the restaurant industry is one of the GMs at the Meteor on Congress. And like, that was the first store that we were able to get our donuts in just cause like he was a friend of ours and we were just able to build off of that, which is really helpful. And just, it just happened by us being like open to it, if that makes yeah. sense. And after okay. joining Instagram, there were a couple of other similar size, like donut ventures or people that were just starting out that had different business models. And there was Connie and Johnny is a donut shop in Nashville that we're like in touch with through Instagram and they had the business plan of selling at coffee shops and doing it that way. So I think that's where Appreciate the idea stemmed money. from. But yeah, if you're ever in Nashville, Honey and Johnny's Donuts. You're the guy, you're the guy to, ne- to know where donuts are nationwide, probably. It's a real problem. It, it, it's one of those, like most obsessions, right? Like your double-edged sword, but it isn't type of thing. Like it's by chasing your passion like that, you're getting a chance to live your dream. That's amazing when there's so many people who are working an office job or doing something that they probably don't really love or for you you get to live eat and breathe live live breathe and literally eat your dream yeah. <laughs> yep yeah ab- absolutely i get up at 10 p.m to make the donuts and i refer to it as donut energy because i'm never tired when i get up because i'm just like so passionate about making them and so excited about doing it that i just i get up and then make them through the night have wild hours but 
I'm never tired enough or I don't want to do it. I'm just always just, I have to make the donuts. I want to make the donuts. <laughs> you get to make the donuts, right? Type of thing. That's awesome. Prior to doing the coffee shop thing, was were you guys already doing delivery or was that how you guys initially started out? Yeah, that's how we initially started out with selling at the meteor and then doing the deliveries and then little by little we got more and more shops just went around with some samples and yeah we just took boxes of samples to a bunch of coffee shops that like either we liked or we liked what part of town they were in or we liked their vibes and just gave them a card and like hey we're just starting out this is what we have this is what we're trying to do we're selling at the meteor so we're real please try us yeah. out <laughs> <laughs> and like eventually we were able to get yeah, and I think we're able to get like more and more a concern, right? Hey, great. Yeah, we'd love some of your donuts, but is it a one time thing or is it going to be? A, yeah, what gonna... are you guys up to? In Austin, there's so many small businesses like ours that try things out and it doesn't catch. The Meteor definitely helped us be one of the businesses that catch a little bit more because it gave us a little more validity. I mean, it gave you validity also, like on the flip side, it gives you some actual sales because like as, yeah, as, as much yeah. as you have to stay, that is very important. As, as much as you have to stay passionate about continuing to make them from like most people, you also have some level of bills to pay, even if you don't have the full on coffee shop right now and that traction to actually have the sales to continue doing it. Cause there's a lot of people who start something and it's not that they necessarily get bored with it, but it's okay. Well, shoot, I might need to go back to my barista gig because that actually was getting some tips and paying the bills. Whereas the making the donuts thing was not as enjoyable as it might've been. Yeah, absolutely. It is a balancing act for sure. How does that work then with you guys travel wise? You obviously get to travel and go check out donut shops around the country as well, too, as well or just with having the business here, has that been a 52 week a year proposition the last couple of years? Yeah, we haven't, since we started the donuts, been able to do much traveling, but before then we had uh, done a lot of road trips across the country, out to California and up to Chicago, back to the DC area and always trying to hit a lot of donut shops on the way, trying to hit like the specialty ones for sure. Donut Vault in Chicago is a big influence on us. Um, Who's Donuts in New Mexico? Like something that we also try to do with our flavors is something that I'm really interested in doing is making the donut itself flavored, not just a frosting on top. So our cake donuts, like this month we have an oatmeal brown sugar donut. And so there's oatmeal as well as brown sugar in the donut or replace some of the regular sugar with brown sugar and make it work so that it doesn't, so it bakes correctly, but it also has a flavor and is a little more dynamic flavor wise and interesting than just like the same thing, just with the brown sugar frosting or what have you, which could also get my mind going a hundred miles an hour, just thinking of different types of ideas. But that's something that uh, Coos Donuts did in New Mexico. They had a blueberry lavender frosting with a blue cornmeal cake donut. And I was like, blue cornmeal, I've never seen that before. Let me try to do that. And then it goes from there, but, uh, but yeah, there's. I would love to make it to the Northeast and New York to try all those shops. And I would love to try them all. Even Austin's without so like, far away. <laughs> yeah, even without like traveling, we follow so many shops on Instagram and just I keep up with what the trends are and like yeah. not coffee places, but get there's just first. so many flavors you wouldn't think about unless you see someone else do it. And it's like, hmm, maybe we could take some inspiration from that because there's so many shops doing great things like right. around the country for sure. Is it harder to make, it's so like, like you're talking about there with the oatmeal and brown sugar, is it harder to try to change the flavor of the actual donut, I'm assuming, than try to change, again, a frosting or some other flavor oh, absolutely. component? Absolutely, yeah. All the, there'll be minor changes depending on what ingredient you put in there. And the, you have a certain amount of liquid that you put into your normal recipe, and then you change one of the ingredients and that will absorb a different amount of liquid say than like regular flour does. So you have to account for that. And then the sugars and everything reacts a little bit differently depending on what it is. So that's always, always learning about the different ingredients and how they react. And some have more of a positive aspect. Some have a negative, some might change the texture of the donut a little bit, which I'm open to because that just makes the donut that much more unique, but there's definitely challenges when trying to actually get the flavors into the donuts. Does that, I'm assuming as someone who's been doing this now for a while, though, that actually kind of excites you to having that added degree of difficulty? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, that's, like, why we also like to change the flavors every month, because, like, even throughout the month, we start getting bored of certain flavors, and no particular reason why, not the taste of anything, but just, like, it's fun to do things differently, like, even just the toppings, the drizzle, yeah. the process, to and just to keep it enriching. Find a new process or challenge <laughs> yourself. It's starting to do things in a new way is always going to be some sort of a challenge. And whenever you finish it and you get it done, you get that sense of satisfaction. So that's always there. So it's nice to always challenge yourself. And there's so much to challenge myself with the donuts I'm finding out. Yeah, it's not, a, while I'm sure it could be simple, right? You could be Krispy Kreme and, hey, we just do a glazed donut and you can make a lot of money off of something that's very simple. The, the, the possibilities are probably almost endless as far as what you could decide to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we don't make it easy on ourselves for sure. <laughs> do you have any specific flavors or things that you're hoping to try to do with the donuts this year? So we've been or doing... Maybe how, so you can answer that too, but or like how far in advance do you plan some of that stuff? Is that just a, okay, we're getting bored now, let's just figure out stuff for next month? Or is that a longer kind of planning process of, hey, here's an idea, let's do, let's start working on this and it may take six months for us to really get it to where we want to release it there's like constant lists i'm making of like different donut flavor ideas we have been going like month to month like every two months getting the menus together but we're trying to this year since we've done about three years of menus six flavors per menu so 200 different so we're going to start repeating some of the flavors um but I've been reading some cookbooks lately and something that really excites me right now, I read there was a sauce on some, it was like beef or lamb or something, but it was lingonberry, ancho chili, and thyme was the flavor and uh, weird flavor combination mixtures. Yeah. Combinations get me very excited. And especially if I can put it into a donut somewhere. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Sure. Uh, we'll find it. it. But, but yeah, it's going to, it's going to be something that I'm trying out, but, uh, but yeah, that's, we're trying this year to get a lot more ahead of the ball. So we're going to be hopefully six months out, have the menus planned and stuff like that. And repeating the flavors is going to make that a lot easier. Sure. Cause we also, with our menus, since there's only six flavors, we try to balance them as much as we can with a chocolate, a fruity, caramel, sweet vanilla flavor, yeah. like so, sure. not too try many, to get like all the, the, the different. You don't yeah. want them all to be the lamb time <laughs> type of yeah. yeah. We want a product like we can have people, a weird one. We can have a normal one. <laughs> yeah, because people like to try the weird ones. But people also, I am more of a picky person, so I'm sure. gonna want like the traditional flavors. Whereas Andy, of course, wants the weird thing. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's fun to do it and see what people respond to and what people like. And with this year, also like, I was able to just recently quit my restaurant job instead of us both. Do, during the week having day jobs and then the donuts on the weekends I'll be able to go shopping so Andy doesn't have to do that after work do this and that so hopefully we're going to try to tighten things up and also not expand more but try to get more stuff done this year because we're finally able to yeah have yes. me there's, only so many, there's only so many hours in a day as, as much as you love yeah, yeah as much you love making donuts, <laughs> you still have to sleep sometimes so yeah, yeah. And you have to clean your apartment a person, it's crazy you have to make dinner <laughs> for yourself you have to have time together so you don't hate each other <laughs> Like that's not advised. You mentioned no. having in the ballpark of say 200 donuts that you've done over the last three years. Have you prior to starting this year, have you guys ever replicated a donut during that time frame? Yeah, we had some. The way the menu was structured changed. We started with having a classic section that had like glazed donuts, chocolate, uh, strawberry, like more like donut cake. shop flavors. Yeah, just donut insane. shop flavors. And those would change every month, but there's only so many of those. Those we did like chocolate with sprinkles a couple times, strawberry with sprinkles, uh, more of those. But and coming back from the break last year, last summer, we took a two week break and then came back in September and did a contest where people could pick their favorite flavors over the years and the one with the most votes won. So that was like a whole menu of flavors that we brought back, but there's so many little minute changes that you can make to flavors that it's, it's raspberry, but it's raspberry with something else. And so there's just like an endless amount of options, but 
some people just want to want the same thing back. So we've got to listen to the customers. And we can, <laughs> we can also revisiting them. We're finding we can do things better or different. Cause you're like, better your craft than you were. Yeah. Years it's ago, it's so. been exactly. It's been like two years since we've made this. So like we've learned a lot about what goes into this type of donut since then. Has there any donut, has there been a donut idea creation that never that or one specifically that just never quite made it out of the test kitchen that you were thinking like, oh, this is just going to be amazing. And then somehow you just never could quite perfect it to bring it out of the test kitchen. Yeah. There was the few that kind of happened with one specifically. I didn't make it more than once because it was, so it was a jerk spice donut. Okay. So like jerk chicken without the chicken, which it's all spice and cinnamon and stuff like that. But then there's also like onion and garlic. And whenever you took the bite, you're like, oh, this is like spice cake. And then the garlic came and the onion came and just <laughs> sat in your mouth. And was the aftertaste not, not the best. <laughs> not good. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of uh, flavors that we've tried that just like a lot of times things would just be a little underwhelming and the flavor won't mm. come through too much. Like I tried making like a big red donut where I used like big red in the donut, yep. made a big red glaze and it was pink and it was sweet, but didn't taste like big red, you know? So you're, what you're saying is like being the, having to be the taste tester as well is, an, is it sounds like the dream job. There are the occasional test donuts that are not quite where you're like, eh, I don't really need this garlic taste in my mouth anymore. So. Yeah, precisely. For people who are interested in keeping in contact with you guys and seeing what things you guys are doing this year, what are the best ways for people to do that? Instagram, I would say at Andy K's Donuts, where that's where we do most of our just most of our ev everything. Promotion. Yeah. And then we have our website where you can contact us through email and then also order the donuts and find out more information about us and where we sell them and all that type of stuff. But the most updated thing is Instagram, but we're on both every day. Sure. Either way. Yeah, got to be multiple places and a lot of in, in, uh, in the service industry these days to be where people are looking for you. Yeah. Let people know you're here for sure. <laughs> When, and so you mentioned the, do you guys already know what's on the menu then for January? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. So we got that brown sugar cake donut and we also do a vegan cake donut. So that one's going to be a coconut cake donut, which has coconut flour in it, coconut oil in it, coconut milk. So it's a very coconutty cake donut. And then it has coconut milk frosting on it. And then we do three flavors of yeast raised donuts, chocolate frosted with sprinkles, just to do like a classic. We're going to try to bring more of those back this year because sometimes we do get a little bit, a little strange, but we're also doing a lemon honey tea donut, which is something Nicole likes to drink, which is like you fill, you cut a lemon up, put it in a jar and then fill the jar up with honey and then the flavors infuse and you can let it, since it's like honey never goes bad, it'll sit in the fridge for months and the flavor will just just deepen a little bit and so put that in tea it's really good yeah so we're doing a donut with the frosting of that we're going to be doing a blueberry lavender glaze and then we also do fritters and this one this month is a banana walnut so it's going to have bananas and walnut and cinnamon in the dough all chopped up and made into deliciousness that doesn't sound bad. I'm not necessarily the biggest coconut person ever, but I it's for a lot of people, it's either, I feel like it's a, it's a polarizing flavor oh, for most people. Absolutely. You love it, either you love it or you hate it. So if you love it, then the more coconut you can jam pack into mm -hmm. it, I'm sure it will drive those people yeah. pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. There's yeah certain flavors that it's just people are either into or they're not. And I like to try everything. I can be picky, but I like to try it all, but I get that. <laughs> cool. So yeah, definitely check them out on Instagram. That's how I actually found out about them. And through word of mouth, I actually had a, one of my previous guests, Max Kunick, who mentioned here already that he, how he loves your donuts as well, too. Wonderful. Nothing, nothing but good things. So <laughs> I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to do the podcast today and hope you guys have a lot of success here in 2023. Thank you so much. Awesome. Appreciate having us. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Everyone have a wonderful day.